thanks so much for clicking on the video. My name is Leah and let's recap and review Real Housewives of Miami. This is season six, episode 17, the finale. And if the audio was wonky, my apologies, y'all. My microphone broke and I'm irritated because I got to find a way to fix it or buy a new one. And I don't want to do either, but we here. So let's get into it. All right, y'all. So y'all know sometimes before we get into this review, we get a little spicy over here. So the three spicy topics I want to talk to you guys today about is all about the reunion for Real Housewives of Miami. So it looks like they're changing the scheduling. And I really do feel at this point, Bravo is purposely trying to screw these people over. <laughs> at this point, they do not want this franchise to succeed. So I'm getting this information by way of Queens of Bravo, who got this from a Bravo guru. So Queens of Bravo quote tweeted Bravo guru, who said this it seems like the real housewives of miami schedule is going to shift over to thursday in a couple of weeks uh, the reunion part one is set to air on february the 28th part two will air uh, will allegedly air on february the 29th and part three will air on march the 7th this is to make room for bet it all on blonde airing march the 6th and the 13th so this is what the Bravo guru is saying. Queens of Bravo, who's that's this far has been a pretty reliable source for me when I give you guys tea, said this. It says part two and three of Real Housewives of Miami is going to be shifting to Thursday, the same night of pop cultural juggernaut traders us which has actually been a really good show i've been watching it sporadically but the episodes that i've seen have been really good it says to make room for erica jane's um new special so i really do feel like they screwing these people over <laughs> i really do because i don't understand why you would shift the scheduling at the end of the season like at this point they should have just left them on peacock if they were going to do them that way in my opinion and pretty much it was confirmed by people releasing the um descriptions for the part one and part two of the reunion so let's get into that which is our next spicy topic so let's get into these descriptions of what we are said to expect for part one and part two of the reunion god y'all i'm kind of shocked and i'm excited for the reunion mainly because it looks like there's going to be a shift in the group dynamic. And it's actually kind of surprising because I did not think it was going to be between these two ladies. So I don't know if anybody remembers, but there was a clip of Andy that he posted of himself when he was like sitting in his dressing room um, on this set for the reunion for Miami. And he was like, can y'all hear that? Can you hear them arguing? And pretty much it was an argument going on in the hallway and you could kind of hear people yelling everybody assumed that it was adriana and alexia that were beefing and arguing back and forth but it looks like it was larsa and alexia that were arguing so this is um coming from a page called a um adriana's mojito and they are the ones that posted the descriptions for the reunion it says this the miami ladies reunite in a dramatic fashion and fashions in new york city kiki confronts larsa about her behavior since dating marcus adriana recites a poem dedicated to alexia drug accusations and lies fractures alexia and larsa's friendship that is what they're saying we need to expect for part one part Part two, Alexia and Larsa's backstage argument escalates. Lisa is sickened when the group doesn't show her sympathy. Nicole discusses her father's passing and defends herself against the mamacita's madness. So I'm wondering what this is going to be or what this is going to look like for season seven. Like, are, are we about to really have Alexia and Larsa beefing big time? And I low-key am shocked that I'm probably going to be on Alexia's side because this whole entire um, last three episodes, really last three? Yeah, no, yeah, the last three episodes, Larsa has been picking to have a beef with Alexia and pretty much Alexia low-key has been paying Larsa like dust really being like Larsa we're not about to fight about this and also girl you're not making sense so if Alexia keeps that same energy at the reunion and she clocks Larsa I'm probably gonna be on her side okay 
So our last spicy topic is going to be about Mr. Marcus Jordan because it looked like he was acting up alongside his girlfriend, Miss Larsa. So I'm getting this from the Twitter page called No Smoke No More. I also have the page six article that they're referencing in this tweet um, down in the description bar below if you would like to read it for yourself. But since this is how I got this information, this is who I'm going to read it from. So they're saying... Per a Page Six article, it says, Page Six, Marcus Jordan had an outburst at the RHOMA reunion so bad it could change the opinion of the cast. Apparently, Marcus and Larsha shared intense opinions about the other women during a backstage outburst. The women did not hear what Marcus said backstage, and it didn't. E they didn't even know about the incident until after the reunion tape. One source tells Page Six, but it was captured, and the ladies have been made aware of of it a separate insider claims that what marcus said is so bad that it could change the cast opinion of how he, of him should it ever get out page six was told that he had very strong reactions to what was said at the reunion and subsequently made heated remarks about the cast in the show hashtag r-h-o-m-a so if this is true girl i want to hear it <laughs> I want to hear what he has to say. I wonder if they're going to protect him because I feel like Marcus could do a power move and be like, well, I don't need to be a part of this show. If this is going to happen, you know, I got money. His daddy is a billionaire. He could hush them people up if he really wanted to. So I wonder if the production is really going to air whatever he said. And I also wonder if they just egging it on or putting 20 on 10. Because oftentimes they will, like, there will be ramblings about how bad a reunion is or how bad somebody's remarks are about somebody. And then when we see it on the reunion, it's not as bad as we thought it was. It's like, oh, that's what they said? That's not that big of a deal but if it is bad i want to see what he said okay give me the cliff notes you know give me give me something <laughs> you know give me the spark notes i just want to know what's up but i'm looking forward to these reunions i'm looking forward to part one part two and part three if we get into part three because i also saw online that we might not be getting a part three it's so much going on about these the, this reunion either way I'm excited, but let's get into this review. All right, y'all. So this is just a disclaimer so we can get it on and out the way. I have a unpopular opinion when it comes to Gertie versus Larsa. Now, I'm just let y'all know this up front. I have no problems with you expressing a different opinion than mine. I'm cool with that. I have, there's plenty of people that have commented on my videos that don't agree with me and I'm fine with that, but they've been respectful. Now, if your opinion is different from mine or if you feel differently, that is okay and you can express that in the comments, but if you get disrespectful or get nasty towards me, I will block you and I don't care how, like, I don't care. Like, I'm totally fine with people having their own opinions, you know. Have your own opinions, but be respectful because there's definitely a respectful way to tell somebody you disagree with them instead of being ignorant and nasty. But that's just what it is. So let's get into it. So the episode opens up where Marcus and Larsa are talking about the whole Michael Jordan situation. Marcus lets us know in the confessional that his dad was in Paris. Paparazzi were hounding him. They asked him how he felt. At first, he playfully said no. And then he gave that serious no. And about like if the if he was okay with Larsa and Marcus's situation. Marcus can tell that Larsa is upset about it. He took it as a joke. He actually laughed about it, but Larsa's feelings were hurt. Now, if we're gonna be all the way honest, it is a weird situation. I've kind of grew to actually kind of think Larsa and Marcus are kind of like cute together. But if we're gonna be honest, it is a weird situation because she was around him when he was younger, as well as her husband, her ex-husband, and Marcus's his dad do not like each other they have a pretty like a very public rivalry so I feel like Marcus and Larsa in this scene are are capping so freaking hard on top of that they were talking about it on their podcast social anxiety is it something no separation anxiety whatever and I don't mind them talking about it because you know get your money 
how you get it. But I do feel as though if they were just honest about their situation and stop like giving, like keeping up this farce of like, oh, I don't really care if my dad doesn't like it, but my mom, she's okay with it. Everybody's okay. She's liking our picture. She's like, if they were honest and been like, no, the majority of our family aren't really cool with it, but we don't care because I'm a 49 year old and he's a 33 year old and we're adults and it just it is what it is. Our families are going to have to deal with it. Then I feel like people would respect it more as well as just being like, okay, it is what it is. But it's this energy of like, keeping this lie alive where it's just like you look stupid just on the fact that this is kind of like a weird situation and granted you weren't like around him like a lot when he was younger you were around him when you were still married to somebody married to your ex-husband and he was a kid like it just it is what it is ma'am like you're 20 years older than him we're just gonna have to want no is she 20 She's like 17. Yeah, I think it's like 17 or 16 years older than him. It is what it is. But I think we're all just annoyed with the way she's trying to act like, oh, no, we're good. We're good. Girl, you're not good. You're not good. We're just going to have to call a thing a thing. Y'all are not good. And the people can see that it bothers you that that man pretty much said, no, I don't like that girl around my son. And you're, you, you have to know that that was going to happen. Or this could be a possibility that that man would not like you. So we get this scene of Nicole and Gertie hanging out. I think they were at Nicole's apartment because I remember she does have an apartment in the city. And we find out that Nicole and Anthony are trying to have another baby. So she took out her IUD and she was letting Gertie know now her hormones are at like they're where they need to be for them to start really trying to have a baby. Um, Gertie lets Nicole know that she is about to start her chemo after this week and I think she's doing three months of it and you know this might be her last time to have a good time because they're gonna go to Adriana's party it's going to be at Emilio Estefan's um hotel in um uh, Miami it's supposed to be like Havana nights and so she wants to have a good time but she wants to confront Larsa Gertie feels like Larsa reneged on their um what's it called they they made like a deal or they agreed that they wouldn't talk about each other in the press. And Larsa was doing a press run where the person asked her, like, how's it been with the girls? And she was like, you know, I threw a drink. Someone bit me. I don't know if it was a love bite, but she never mentioned Gertie's name. And I remember watching that clip. It was very, like, cheeky. Like, she wasn't being malicious. She wasn't being mean. It was just like, oh, yeah, someone bit me, yada, yada, yada. Well, Gertie feels like Larsa is trying to use her for clickbait. And I'm going to be honest with y'all. I feel like Gertie's putting 20 on 10. She wouldn't be able to say that she got bit if you weren't being a weirdo and bit her when y'all were on the gondola ride. Like, and, and you could have meant it as a love bite or anything, but like, if she, and the way she said it in her interview, she was like, oh, it was a love bite. I feel as though Gertie has like mixed feelings about Larsa that she don't know how to deal with. I think she wants to be friends with Larsa, but it's just, it's the, it's weird because if we're going to be all the way honest, she didn't mention your name in the press. You did bite her. And when you watched the interview, she wasn't being very malicious or malice. You said y'all was moving forward. So why are you trying to move backwards right here? And I also feel like people are starting in the middle when it comes to Larsa and Gertie because Larsa is easy to hate. Like, we just gonna put that out there. Larsa is a great TV villain because she lacks self-awareness and she does things that are very self-centered but like she is a, a, a easy person to hate but in this situation right here with her and Gertie I feel like they're both wrong like if we're gonna be honest and, and start from the beginning and not the middle Gertie started this and I know some of y'all are gonna be like but no no she did because when Larsa asked Gertie at the beginning of the season why'd you call me fake and it came out of the blue. It virtually, like legit, it came out of the blue. I remember doing a spicy corner. 
um during um during last season it was a spicy corner i think it was during before one of the reunions or on one of the reunion videos and gertie was doing an interview with russell with russell was with her and it was like for page six it was like a cute little venue and the interviewer asked her who is the fakest person on the cast and she immediately said larsa but then when they asked her like what has she done gertie really couldn't say anything and i think what happened was gertie got caught up in the beef between Larsa and Nicole, where she felt like she had to have Nicole's back. So she immediately rushed to say Larsa. So when Larsa confronted her this season and was like, why'd you call me fake? I think she had a, a legit reason to be like, girl, why'd you call me fake if we're still on the phone talking and I haven't done anything to you? I think the way that Larsa is handling this and you compound that with the cancer diagnosis is just, it's, it doesn't look good for Larsa. It's like, you look like a horrible person arguing with someone that has cancer. And then on top of that, you told everybody her business about that. And Gertie has every right to be angry that Larsa spread it, like, you know, told her health information when she like verbatim said, girl, don't do that. I want to tell the ladies. So if she was harping on that, like you told my business, I'd be like, yeah, I'm rocking with you, Gertie. But to harp on this situation, but then you forgave her. Yeah, I would be Larsa and be like, I can't win with you because you said we were moving forward, but now you confronted me about this. Like, I think Gertie is losing the plot. And I all, and I really think she wants to be friends with Larsa, but she also is like, she just needs somebody to be mad at right about now because she is going through an emotional time. And Larsa is the only one that is giving her like a fight. Like, legit, it, and that's just what it is to me for me I'm like and I know some people aren't gonna agree and again I said you can disagree with me but Gertie's not making sense to me I think she's losing the story and I feel as though people aren't starting at the beginning Gertie started this and I promise you if the cancer diagnosis wasn't a part of this I feel like people would like more people would be on Larsa's side in the sense of like Gertie isn't making sense because even when they were in the church because Gertie keeps harping on Larsa's not a good friend but you keep reaching out to Larsa Larsa's not reaching out to you you wanted to have a private conversation with her and y'all had that sit down when y'all were in the church in Mexico she didn't reach out to you until you reached out to her when y'all were sitting down and um kneeling and praying Larsa was praying Praying. you grabbed onto her and then she comforted you like you are the one constantly reaching out to Larsa Larsa's not doing that so at the end of the day you are the one who wants this friendship more than her and maybe that's why she's upset but in this moment her being mad about the whole she said I bit her you did if you didn't bite her we wouldn't be here she wouldn't have anything to say so we have this scene with Alexia and Peter and Frankie. So they're in that apartment, that one that Frankie said, it's little. Like he ain't like it, but I, I hopefully he's acclimating well. They moved in. We don't see Todd. I see the, the absence of Todd makes me feel like there's something going on. Definitely between Alexia and, um, and, and Todd. Because I'm just kind of like, why isn't he around? Like he is not on a trip with his, his daughters anymore. Why is he not helping you move in. What's going on with that? We then see Peter comes in there and Alexia wants to have a conversation with Peter. I'ma just be honest with y'all. Peter looked dirty. Peter looked like his piss stank that all he drink is Red Bull and smoking. He he feel, he gives I vape and I drink Red Bull. Like he just looks unkept. But Alexia wants to have a conversation with him about if anything were to ever happen to her, he would be the guardian over Frankie. Girl, no. I'm sorry. Granted, she said Peter has definitely got his life around, like, you know, turned around in the past couple of years. I, I get that, but he does not need to be taking care of that boy. I need you to have better relatives that you know will make sure he is okay. Because Peter gets very much, he would let Frankie do whatever. Like we saw, they did that flashback to Todd when Todd basically told Peter, I lay hands on you because you're not going to bully me in my house. Like if you want to go, we could go. And I, I rocked with Todd because Todd really was like, y'all fight you back. It's whatever. And I said, it's whatever. Peter, you might get beat up. You might get, Todd looked like he got hands. Okay. But when he said that, 
um, Frankie almost like Frankie, I get, I think he had like a seizure or right? like, cause Peter was letting him smoke weed and he had too much. And I feel as though like, I don't, mm -mm, mm -mm. like let him be in Peter's, like let Frankie have Peter, like that's his brother. But I would definitely either find a facility that I know, like, cause you know, not all these facilities be treating these people right. But I know it's like, but if you could find a facility that you can like vet and to make sure that if something happened, they would be able to take care of him. And he would still be able to live the lifestyle he wanted to or find a family member that would take care of him. And he could still because I definitely agree that I know Alexia will set them up monetarily. But also the daddy can't take them because his daddy got child abuse ch charges and he used to sell drugs. OK, they're not letting him have, have, have him. But I'm just kind of like. It, it can't be Peter. It can't be Red Bull vaping Peter. It just, it can't be. It can't be. I, I, mm -mm, mm -mm. I feel like all the pro, all the positive things y'all know. It's just, it can't be Peter. It's just, it can't be. We then get this scene with Lisa and her mom and her aunt. They are cute. Just the cutest. Like her mom and her aunt are just the cutest little things. They seem like very sweet ladies. So her mom and her aunt are Jamaican. And I think I found online, Lisa is Jamaican. I think they also have Chinese in their background as well as the dad is like Irish and um, I think it was Irish and like German. So she just, you know, an array of culture and, and races, just a multi, like ambigu no, an, an ambiguous queen, I guess. But they're at the house on Star Island and we find out that she got to move out. So her and Jody are going to go on like a two week vacation to Europe. And then she's going to like when she gets back, they have to move out to another place while her um, house that her and Lenny settled on is getting built. We find out that the family isn't really fond of Lenny and the cousins in Canada has been calling. Um, what's it called? Calling the family, trying to make sure like is Lisa okay to like family members been calling the mama and the aunt like is Lisa okay and do we need to ride down to Miami and put a hole in Lenny's chest type energy like they ready to like, they ready to ride a dime for Lisa and the mom also says that she really never liked Lenny even the aunt was like I know she always felt like she could do better she ex they explained that like Lenny would never speak to them correctly. Like the mom would try to have a conversation with Lenny, but he would always walk away from her. So she started texting him and it really didn't get any better. He just didn't like respond to the text messages. And so Lisa says in her confessional that like he Lenny talks to people differently based on like monetary value. She also said when they met him at the wedding or they met the mom at the wedding, she pretty much told Lisa's family to address her as Mrs. Hodgstein and to address the dad as Professor Hodgstein. I would have told them people to kick the blackest part of my ass. Because I, I'm sorry, Lisa, you talking about monetary. It's, it's given that he didn't respect them because of monetary value. It's given differently. He didn't like them because they were they weren't white. It's giving that. It's giving you his family didn't respect them because they weren't they weren't fully white. Now you can look at Lisa's family and know that it's a sprinkle of whiteness in there, but they not all that. And they could possibly kind of get away with it a little bit. But when you hear the mom and the aunt talk, clearly they are not, they they're from the care like the Caribbean area. And I just feel like there's no way I would marry a man that would treat my family like that. And Lisa, to me, is just a woman that is constantly in survival mode. If the story that she's telling about leaving her house when she was like 15 or 16 and then being taken care of by like her boyfriend's family and then leaving him and getting another man to take care of her, it seems like she's constantly in survival mode. And that when she got with Lenny, she probably felt like she hooked a big fish. It was like, okay, I'm not letting him go for nothing because I'm going to be able to live the lifestyle I want to. And, you know, he has his money. He's a plastic surgeon. I can live the dream that I want to live because she's still doing the same thing of allowing another person to take care of her instead of her taking care of herself by way of being with Jody. Like you haven't gone to therapy to heal and you definitely haven't saved enough money to live on your own to still be dealing and fighting with Lenny. I just feel like she's a lady that just moves in survival mode. And it's like at the age that she's at now, it's time to like 
get out of that and really like you don't want to just survive you want to thrive it's time to start thriving you got two kids and you don't want to pass that down on to them but it did this whole interaction made me look at Lisa funny because I did watch episode not episodes but season one through three before season four when they came back and I distinctly remember them asking Lisa about her family. And she would always say she didn't have a great relationship with her family, that her mom kicked her out when she was 15 and that she immigrated to America when she was like, I think like 18 or something like that. And that like Lenny's family is her family. That's what, cause she doesn't have family. That's why she wanted Lenny's mom to really embrace her. So I feel like, girl, it feels like you ostracized your family because of Lenny. Like you knew Lenny didn't like your family like that or Lenny was embarrassed by your family or just like I said, just did not like them. So you tried to push them to the side because in one breath, you can't say that like you didn't have a family. But now when you're in trouble, you're calling upon them and you want and you've been trying to visit them. But Lenny didn't want you to visit them. But it's just I don't know. It's just this whole situation made me look at Lisa funny because it's like. You had one story in them early seasons and now we here and when you're down and out, you need your family. They come running. So I'm just like, how bad was the relationship? And did you really just kick them to the curve so you could be with this man who, who treated you poorly? Because it seems like he's been treating you like trash since the beginning. From what the un is saying. So I don't, I don't know, girl. I don't know why you set yourself up like this. We then get this really emotional scene with Gertie. She is deciding to shave her head because we know she's about to start chemo. And I think she just doesn't want to have that traumatizing experience that women and men have shared of like your hair falling out or you washing your hair and you see it falling out in clumps in the shower. So her makeup artist comes over, does her makeup. She's emotional because it seems like her and Gertie are actually like really good friends. And then her hair is in these like, huge box braids jumbo box braids so she starts off cutting it and then russell i guess has his own um barber's kit he shaves her head and honestly i told y'all the shave look on gertie looks very beautiful she's a beautiful lady like she looks gorgeous with a bald head like it looks amazing on her but she was she was emotional like for some women their hair means a lot to them for some not so much but it seems like her hair was a part of her identity so losing that had to be painful for her but again I commend Russell and I don't want to give him too much okay shout out to my Twitter mutual that said you know you got to give the boys their sixes not their tens when you give them tens that's when they start messing up but I appreciate how he he's been caring for for Gertie like even when he was reassuring her while he was shaving her head I thought that was a very beautiful moment and again she looks beautiful and I'm glad that she has him there because she is chaotic as hell and I don't know if I could deal with her it still trips me out that she's a Capricorn because I was like I don't think I'm that chaotic and she's a January one at that and so am I normally the energy that's chaotic goes with them December girls okay not the Januaries but he is the, the calm to her chaos. And I think it's wonderful that she has somebody there that's holding her hand and that's reassuring her that she is still beautiful and gorgeous. And I really do hope their relationship is lasting, that he's taking care of himself as he's taking care of her. And they have a great life together, you so, know? Before we get to the party, I almost forgot this scene. We have a scene where Julia and Adriana meet up. Julia talking about selling that guava jam for $30, girl. Ain't nobody selling jam. No one's buying jam for $30. Inflation is too high and them jars were not big enough. If I pay $30 for jam, it better last more than like, like it better last for at least almost a year. $30 is a lot for some berry, like some squashed up berry juice. Like don't play with me, Julia. But she wants to try to convince Martina to move to the farm and leave that house that they have by the water. Girl, that's never happening. And stop trying to pressure that lady to live on a farm. Like, if you want to live there, cute, you drive back and forth. But it doesn't seem like Martina likes them animals the same way you do. And I don't think it's fair to try to force somebody to live somewhere where they don't want to. On top of that, the view of the water is way beautiful than a farm and i love animals okay i love animals down all right i i i used to work on a farm legit like at, <laughs> at my undergrad i worked with chickens like i used to work in poultry production so it's just like i love me some animals but like as like me seeing that every day no ma'am no sir no ma'am no sir <laughs> 
No, ma'am. No, sir. So she ends up letting Martina know that she got a pig, Houdini. When her and Alexia went to the petting farm, I guess Houdini was getting bullied by the other pigs. Or like, I think the guy said his siblings. So she took him in. Pigs are cute they're cute and martina was kind of irritated but she was like it's here now because julia has to find a way to make the farm profitable and i guess she thinks selling that jam is going to be profitable but i'm just like why not just sell like a tour or have a day where it's like come work at julia's farm for like a day it's a whole bunch of housewife fans that would like eat that up unless she just doesn't want people to be at the farm like that which is true nah don't do that because some people are weird julia some people are weird and they might start stalking you, sis. So don't do not do that. You said the, the animals was your sanctuary. I don't know. You're going to have to find a way. Maybe you can start outsourcing them as a petting zoo. You know, taking them to birthday parties and letting kids feed them. And then you educate them about how to take care of them. Maybe you could do that. So it is Adriana's Havana night. We see Emilio go check up on her. Now, mind you, Emilio, you're not beating the allegations on Twitter. A lot of people feel like you and Adriana got an arrangement because that song is not on iTunes. I checked because I thought Fire was kind of corny. But then when I listened to it, I said, oh, this is kind of cute, Adriana. But it's I'm just some going on, Emilio. Gloria, come get your husband. Come get your husband, Gloria, because because Adriana be a little too giddy around Emilio. OK, but she's excited to perform. We saw her practice. All the ladies get there, you know, and we see a sit down where I think who was it, you guys? It was Nicole, Kiki. No, it, no, I don't think it was Nicole. I think it was Kiki, Larsa, um, Alexia and Julie. No, Larsa, Alexia and Julia. Marisol isn't there. She's in Scotland renewing her vows to her boyfriend, Scott. But she did do a FaceTime call to Adriana to like say, you know, I'm happy for you. Have a good time. Please send me a video. And she pretty much says like, yeah, it's weird. I know it is. But like, even though Adriana gets on my nerves, I am happy for her. And I just, you know, I forgave and I want to move forward. Okay, Marisol, cute. So again, the sit down is Kiki, Larsa, Alexia, and Julia. And they're sitting down in one of the little cute little areas and they're talking. Alexia asks, Alec uh, no, Larsa asks Alexia like, oh, where is like Todd? Is Todd coming? And Alexia was like, none of the other husbands came. I'm not going to, I don't bring my husband everywhere. Like get out of my face. They then start talking about the whole Marcus of it all. Everyone's not buying what she's saying. Excuse me. Even her best friend, Lisa, was sipping on that drink like... OK, because she said Marcus was mad at Kiki for asking about the dad. Then Julia was like, well, do he rock with you or not? And Larsa was just like, he's cool with me. And I rather Marcus is like I said in the beginning, if you would just be up front and just be like, I don't know if he likes me or not. I don't know if he's OK with our situation or not, but we're two grown adults and we together and it is what it is. Then nobody would have anything to say, but it's Larsa wanting to like make this into something like like make it into something it's not where she just can't be honest about that man not really liking her or really being okay with their situation so then we have a sit down between um so nicole and gertie come and sit down and nicole is talking about how great things have been and then i think larsa talks about how great it's been between her and um nicole and nicole talks about how great things have been between her and alexia how they've been talking to each other Nicole's dad is there. He having a good time. RIP to him. Side note, the girlfriend looks like a younger version of Nicole's mama. Like one of my mutuals pointed that out on Twitter and I said she does look like a younger version of the mom and she kind of talks like the mom too. I think the daddy knew he messed up and he really loves that lady but he know she ain't gonna never take him back and now he gone and I think he was just trying to relive his life because that girl do sound a little bit like, like not even look, like a lot like the mama. But he was there. He was lifted. He was drunk. But he was having a good time. We know his Nicole daddy was a good time. So Gertie kicks this off. Gertie kicks this off where she basically gets mad at Larsa and pretty much said, I thought we were moving forward in Mexico. We had that moment. And Larsa's kind of looking at Gertie like, yeah, we are moving forward. And Gertie's like, well, no, you were talking about me in the press. And uh, Larsa's like, I didn't say your name. And it was a joke. And she was like, no, you know what you're doing. You're being very calculated. And 
Larsa was like, no, I can't, I really can't win with you, Gertie. Like, I didn't say your name. It was a joke. Like, what are you talking about? You did bite me. And that's the truth. You did bite her. So why can't she speak about it? And she didn't mention your name. So they start to get loud with each other. You know, Larsa's getting upset. You see Russell is there and he's looking like you know, monitoring the situation before anything goes down. You got Nicole in the confessional pretty much being like, Gertie is still upset about Larsa telling everyone that she had cancer. And if Larsa would read the room, it's just like, don't argue with someone that has cancer, pretty much. So then they start going back and forth. And then Larsa says, well, Gertie, stop me. Like, I can't win with you. It is what it is. You need to start worrying about me and worry about your health. And that really pissed off Gertie. And she had a right to be pissed off because that was disrespectful. But Larsa has let us know, like, you fight with me, I go to hell. Like, it's whatever. I don't care. And I guess she's telling the truth. And so Julia was like, and um alexia's eyes got big like girl why did you say that but my thing about it is everybody has an issue with what larsa is saying but no one is telling that to her nicole said it in her confessional alexia said it in her confessional and so did julia and even kiki didn't say it. and i'm like if y'all don't like what larsa is saying check her check her that's all you got to do and so then larsa is just kind of like girl whatever because then Gertie's like, will the real Larsa stand up? And Gertie, like, Larsa was like, you know what? I'm over this. I'm whatever. And so she gets up and she goes and talks to Lisa and Jody. So, like I said, Larsa goes and talks to Lisa. And Lisa's like, oh, like, why? Like, it was a joke, wasn't it? And Larsa's like, yeah, it was a joke. So Lisa comes back over to the group to sit down and talk to Gertie. And she's trying to tell Gertie it was just a joke. And Gertie don't really want to hear, which I understand. Like, I'm not arguing with you, girl. I'm arguing with her. I don't need this right now. So things are getting really heated. And then... I forgot what somebody said, but I thought it was hilarious when both Nicole and Alexia just looked at it, just turned to each other and looked at each other like, oh my God, is this really happening? Are they really arguing with her? And then things get really upset and like Gertie gets really upset and like overwhelmed and she just snatches her wig off and they see that she shaved her head and then everyone gets quiet and they're like, okay. And she was, and they're just like, Gertie, I'm sorry. Like, like, Larsa's like, what else do you want me to say? Like, I said, I'm sorry. It is what it is. And so Russell gets upset and he's like, are you really doing this to Gertie? Like, you don't need this. I told you it's not that deep. Then Larsa says to Russell, come get your wife because she acting crazy. Then Russell tells Larsa, be respectful, Larsa, be respectful. And then Lisa gets up and was like, Gertie, like for real, like this is how we going to leave things. And so she leaves. Gertie's what Gertie did piss Russell off and because I think Russell was mad at Larsa but I think he was more mad at her because he's like you know you about to start cancer treatment and you're not supposed to be angry like this why are you arguing with her because at the end of the day Gertie started this argument the issue is again Larsa doesn't know how to read the room and like even Alexia said in her confessional like Sometimes you just got to eat it. She has cancer. You should have just said, okay, my bad, Gertie, and left it at that. But Larsa is the type of person where, like, if you want to fight, I'm going to give you a fight. It doesn't matter what you have. But I also feel like even if you have cancer, just because you have it does not mean you can start an argument with me and then use cancer to shut me up. Because that's why I did not, I did not, I'm just going to be honest, I didn't like Gertie snatching off that, that wig and that hat. I felt like it that if you call it what Larsa did very calculated, that felt very calculated from Gertie because you didn't even glue that wig down, sis. Like it felt like you came there to have that moment. And I didn't like that. Because now I feel like you're you're trying to capitalize off of this and it is a serious situation. I do feel like Larsa has been disrespectful to Gertie but I also feel like Gertie isn't innocent in this situation I feel like they both have played in hand in this and I do feel like Gertie wanted a moment that night and because it wasn't going the way she wanted she snatched that off because I was like what was the point of that like why did you do that Gertie like for real and I and I knew Russell was mad because she was trying to calm Russell down and I think he was more mad at her because he was like is this why we came out? Because she was like, oh, baby, you just need a drink. I'm, it's okay, Russell. I'm going to calm down. It's okay, Russell. I'm going to calm down. Because I think Russell was just looking at her like seriously. 
Like, this is what we doing? And so then Lisa rushes after her, Nicole rushes after her, and then Kiki rushes after her. Lisa was doing too much, and I was glad that Nicole was there to tell her to get away from get away from Gertie. Pretty much Nicole was like, when Gertie gets upset, she just needs a minute. Then Kiki rushes after her and tells Gertie, like, girl, you don't need to be doing this. And Gertie's like, no, I'm fine. And Kiki's like, you're not really fine. You you have a health problem. And I don't think being angry is going to help you out. It's going to make it worse. And then we flash back into the house and Julia was trying to tell Larsa she was wrong. Like, she was like, Larsa, no, girl. It you just should have let it go. And Larsa was like, it was a joke. Like, legit, it was a joke. Like, I didn't mean any malice behind it. And even Alexia was like, I get you did it was a joke. But, like, it don't look well for you to fight with a lady that got cancer. It doesn't. But that's why I think Larsa is a good villain because she doesn't care. Like, she doesn't care. And it's like, you need somebody who don't care if you're going to be a TV villain. And that is what Larsa is. I feel as, and, and again, I do feel like... There's blame on both parts, but I also feel like it's not fair for you to have an illness and then argue with me and try to use that as a trump card. Because if you don't want this, the energy to re reciprocate it towards you, then don't start the argument. That's just what I think. That's just that's just what it is to me. Like I know people are gonna feel differently. A lot of people feel like Larsa is on the wrong, and I do think Larsa is wrong, but I also think Gertie is wrong too. There was definitely a better way to handle this. And I think it just reaffirms that I think Gertie wants to have a relationship with Larson. She just doesn't know how she wants to maneuver it. Because like I, like I said before, you've been the main one reaching out to Larsa, not the other way around. And if her ear, and like for me, if her issue was mainly like you told everyone about my cancer diagnosis. I'd be like, yeah, girl, you got it. Like legit. Like you, t like I, you got it, but you said y'all were beyond that. But to make it this moment where it's like, oh, like about the bite, it's like you did bite her and she didn't say your name. So like nobody knew it was you, only you knew it was you. And she wasn't saying it maliciously. Uh, Cause again, if you go listen to the clip or read it, it was like, oh, I think it was a love bite. Like I, like, yeah. So to me, I just feel like Gertie lost the plot by the end of the season for me. So it is time for Adriana's performance. She looked really lovely, but Adriana needs to go watch RuPaul's Drag Race because even if this part where she was lip singing, she wasn't even like trying to act like she was keeping up with the track. Like this, like the song was going and Adriana's like, and like even with the rapping part, I was like, D did you really practice Adriana? But everyone was having a good time. Emilio Gay came up there and was hitting on them bongos. The girls were all dancing together and they were really enjoying each other. What I will say is I love this cast. I love this cast. I don't think they need to change this cast until we possibly get to like season, season eight. Season eight, then you can start taking people out and adding new people in. But this cast gives me old Real Housewives. Gives me old Real Housewives, but with a fresh twist. And I feel like everybody plays their part. And I enjoy everybody. I really do. Even the people I don't like, I don't want to get kicked off. So they do the ending credits. So they said for Kiki, um, between raising her kids and modeling gigs, Kiki has been spending time with a new man in Los Angeles. But she has yet to reveal him to the ladies. Girl, we seen you, man. They, the, the girl, he's found him. He's a... He an okay looking white man. He an okay looking white man. But we seen your man, Kiki. We seen your man. For Adriana, it says Adriana continues to work with Emilio Estefan. Her new single drops early 2024. It's still not on iTunes. And, and we in February. Okay, sis. It says with hopes of adding Emilio's Grammy total. Adding girl. Maybe. You know things could happen. Do do do. So for Marisol, it says Marisol and Steve renewed their vows at Arguan Castle in Scotland. Although they still are not technically married, she's planning another legally non-binding vow renewal with Todd and Alexia. I mean, look, they've been together. They like it. I love it. If she don't want to tie herself to that man, but still be with him, do you, girl? Be progressive. Um... 
For Nicole, it says renovations on Nicole's uh, new home are still in progress. Although her father's passing was unexpected in November, she was able to tell him she was pregnant. Oh, that sucks for her. But we did get to see her pregnant. She looks cute. Girl, we didn't see this scene of Marcus giving Larsa a promise ring. Now, I'm not going to lie. That ring looked nice. But at 59, I don't want no promise ring. I want a wedding ring, sir. But okay. Um, it says, Larsa and Marcus are still talking about marriage. Marcus has yet to in introduce Larsa as his girlfriend to his dad, Michael Jordan. She is not, um, she's not sure which will happen first. Girl, you would hope to meet his family before you get married to him. Let's not be stupid, Larsa. Uh, we see this really cool painting of Julia. It was actually really cute. Um, it says, Julia pledged uh, to live her life to the fullest and continues. And with Martina's cancer in the rearview mirror, the two have restarted their hopes of adopting a child. So congrats to them. We get this very beautiful moment of Frankie taking an Uber. Now, mind you, he wasn't totally by himself. Production was with him. But I still think that is a step in the right direction. And I hope when we get to the reunion, we find out that he's progressing a lot more. But we said Alexia feels more positive than ever about Frankie's progress. And contrary to the rumors about her uh, finances, Alexia just brought a Ferrari and took a luxury vacation to Italy with Todd. I still think them finances is a little shaky. Um, now, Miss Lisa, it says Lisa moved into a condo while she waits for Lenny to build her new home, which I, I think that's so stupid because I don't think that man going to build that house. I really don't. I think he is going to keep her and them kids in that condo. And I just I feel that way. I just have a feeling he's going to do that. It says Lenny is still contesting their settlement. So Lisa could be waiting for a while. Yeah, it's not happening. It's not happening. We then see um, Gertie start her first day of chemo treatment. And thankfully, Gertie is officially cancer free. This was a great season to me. I know the girlies were sleeping on um, Real Housewives of Miami, but I really enjoyed this season. I really did. I again, I really like this cast. Like they give me old housewives. I don't think anybody needs to change their positions. I know people want to give Adriana and Kiki a mojito, but I feel like we need strong friends of the shows. And I feel like they are very strong friends of her. All three of them, Adriana, Marisol, and Kiki are the example of friends of the show that I think the other shows should model their friends of the show out of them. We're getting stories about them. Not a lot of story but about them, but still important stories. And they move the story along. So I feel like Kiki should stay where she's at. Maybe season eight, she should get a mojito. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed this season. I really, I really did. I really did. And I can't wait to watch the reunion. But yeah, y'all, that is it. That is all. Remember to be bravely authentic and definitely drop down in the comments below. Now, give me your thoughts. And again, I said be respectful because I don't want to have to block nobody. But if you get ignorant, I, I don't, I'm going to block you. Okay? I am. Okay? But y'all have a great day, great night, whatever. Anytime you see this, I hope you're having a perfect day. And I'm out, y'all. Deuce.